Hi and welcome to our today demo which is about Open Virtual Switch or OVS. So in today's demo we will be reviewing and learning about the OVS and also about uh, Linux namespaces or you know in in networking term how we can create VRFs within within the Linux uh, space. So in today's demo uh, we will be using a host and within this host we will be creating two uh, VRFs or Linux namespaces called VRF1 and VRF2 and we will be creating these virtual Ethernet interfaces between our VRFs and we will create a virtual switch also on the top and we will connect these virtual Ethernets the other side of the virtual Ethernets to this OVS switch uh, we will configure the OVS switch to do the basic packet forwarding between these two switches between the two uh, VRFs which we have and later on, we will also do some testing by enabling and assigning an IP address to its switch virtual interface or the bridge interface. So we will make a layer three interface on the on the OVS on this particular bridge uh, which we are creating. And also, we will try to enable spanning tree on this virtual switch and see how the spanning tree operates uh, within the virtual switch. Uh, so I have drafted also uh, the list of tasks which we are going to do. Uh, so the first step is that you know we are going to create the two uh, VRFs or namespaces, uh, VRF1 and VRF2. So to start with, I will start uh, making a SSH connection to our host, which is this IP address 192.168.211.55. So let's get the console ready. Okay. All right, so I have the SSH key, so I don't need to provide any password, and I'm root and at this host, which is called OVS. All right, so now the list, uh, the first task is to create these two uh, VRFs or namespaces. So we have a command in Linux called IP net NS network namespaces. Uh, so if I call this command with the uh, argument of list, it shows me the list of available namespaces or those VRFs. So each Linux namespace is a copy of uh, Linux stack, Linux networking stack, and includes a complete isolated uh, like routing table or other uh, other networking related task. So I will create a new uh, namespace called uh, IP namespace add VRF1 and we will create another one VRF2. So if I do the list again, it shows me that, hey, now we got two VRFs, two Linux namespaces available in this system right now. Okay. All right, now our second task is to create these virtual Ethernet pairs. So virtual Ethernet 3 and virtual Ethernet 4, which should be connected to each other. And the other one, which is this one, virtual Ethernet 1 and virtual Ethernet 2. So in beginning, we just create these virtual Ethernets uh, and the link between each other, but we will not assign them to anything right now. So let's create uh, this virtual link. So for command for creating that is IP link at virtual Ethernet 1. And we will say type. So the type of this connection is, is a virtual Ethernet. And, and we say peer name is so virtual Ethernet 1 is connecting to virtual Ethernet 2 and virtual Ethernet 2. Okay, so if I ask, just say IP link. Now we can see that uh, we got virtual Ethernet 2 and we got virtual Ethernet 1. Uh, so virtual Ethernet 2 is connected to virtual Ethernet 1 and we got also virtual Ethernet 1 which is connected to virtual Ethernet 2. So the link is created and we got two presentation of these two virtual Ethernet, virtual Ethernet 1 and virtual Ethernet 2. Uh, let's create the virtual Ethernet 3 and 4 so we can use the same command and say uh, create the virtual Ethernet 3 
type virtual ethernet and the peer name is virtual ethernet 4. now if i just do the ip link now we got all of the virtual ethernet that we wanted is all created so virtual ethernet 2 virtual ethernet 1 virtual ethernet 4 and virtual ethernet 3 so all of them are created and they are here okay okay so let's go back to our drawing and see uh, so two virtual VRF sites being created. We created virtual Ethernet ports with, between virtual Ethernet 1 and virtual Ethernet 2. We have created virtual Ethernet 3 and virtual Ethernet 4 as well, and the link between each other. So that's done. Now we will move the virtual Ethernet 1 to VRF 1. So we have already created VRF 1. We have already created virtual Ethernet 1. We will now move this virtual Ethernet 1 to the vrf1 so right now virtual ethernet1 is sitting inside the default namespace or default vrf we will move it inside the virtual uh, vrf number one now uh, to do that we will use this ip link set virtual ethernet1 net space network namespace of vrf1 now if i run our ip link command you will see that the virtual ethernet one is disappeared from here so we have virtual ethernet two we have virtual ethernet three and we have virtual ethernet four so it's not inside so when i issue the ip link it shows all the links and interfaces which we got inside the default vrf or default namespace uh, since the virtual ethernet one is moved to vrf one uh, we don't see that anymore. Uh, so let's do that for the virtual Ethernet 3 as well. So IP link set virtual Ethernet 3 should go to networking namespace or ERF or VRF2. Now if I do IP link, uh, we just see here we got virtual Ethernet 2 and we have virtual Ethernet 4. So virtual Ethernet 2 and virtual Ethernet 4 they are inside our default uh, namespace or default VRF and these two other side of these interfaces are inside a different VRF right now now to check that uh, we can use this command to we say IP net NS exec so execute this particular command in inside the vrf so inside vrf1 i want to execute the command ip link so inside uh, vrf1 we have a loopback interface and we have virtual ethernet one only these two and if i do it for vrf2 we will see virtual ethernet three which we can see that i can do other commands also i can do ifconfig for example which there is nothing there because the interface is down okay so we have done uh, we have moved already the interfaces uh, now we have to assign the IP addresses to virtual Ethernet in VRF1 and VRF2 so we will assign this IP the 10.10.10.1 in VRF1 and 10.10.10.2 the for the virtual Ethernet 3 inside the VRF2 so for assigning that command we will use exactly the ifconfig command so i would say ip net ns execute in vrf1 i want to do the ifconfig 10.10.10.1 uh, slash 24 and we will say up because the interface is down and we will make sure the interface is up Oh, I sorry, I forgot to add the the interface name. So I've config for virtual Ethernet one. Okay. Now to verify that we can do this. So in VRF one, we should I have config. So in VRF one, I have config says I have virtual Ethernet one and the IP address on virtual Ethernet one is 10.10.10.1. So that that's that's correct so here 10.10.10.1 .10 .10 .10 they moved it here so this is completed now let's do the same on the vrf2 
So we will say IP net NS execute in VRF2. I want to do IF config of virtual Ethernet 3 and the IP address should be 10.10.10.2 slash 24 and I want to bring up the interface. So this is also done. Uh, to verify that, we will say IP networking namespace execute for me in VRF2 just IF config. And here we go, virtual Ethernet 2, and we have 10.10.10.2. We can do other commands like, you know, let's say route route dash n. So inside the VRF2, we have just 10.10.10.0, which is the the network address for this and it's just connected to virtual ethernet 3. however in my the current namespace i mean in the default vrf where we are now if i do route dash n i have a default gateway as well so my current ip address scheme is completely different it's in 192.168.211 so i have a different routing table vrf2 has different routing table and vrf1 also has a different routing table so we have assigned IP addresses here. And so these two VRFs, I mean, these two are completely isolated now. So we will not be able to ping each other. So from VRF1 to VRF2. So to, to test that, you know, we can say IP net NS execute for me from on VRF1. I want to do a ping to 10.10.10.2, which is not working. So 10.10.10.1 is sending some, trying to send some ICM packets to 10.10.10.2 and it doesn't work because they are not connected to each other, right? There is no connectivity between these two. So this part we haven't done yet. Okay, so now let's continue. Let's go back to our drawing. Okay, so we have assigned the IP addresses. Now we have to create virtual switch one. So virtual switch one is going to be an obvious switch, the, uh, the obvious switch. So on this host, I have already installed OVS with default configuration uh, within the Ubuntu. And we will use OVS commands, OVS commands to create a virtual switch called vSwitch1. And after that, we will have to assign these two interfaces to our OVS switch. So we will create a virtual switch one. So virtual switch one is like a virtual bridge or, you know, in our networking term, it can be like a, you can call it as a VLAN. And we will connect these two interfaces, the virtual Ethernet 2 and virtual Ethernet 4 to this particular virtual Ethernet uh, to virtual switch one. Uh, let's let's try to do that now. Now to communicate with OVS, we have OVS, if you just press tab after OVS, we get these few commands which we have. So OVS, uh, we have app control, you know, OFCTL, this is for uh, commands for communicating open flow with OVS. So those, those commands related to that, when our OVS is being connected to an SDN controller. Uh, we got uh, data plane controller, we got bug tool, you know, TCP dump can help you just uh, to do some, uh, I think, doing TCP dumps. And we got this very virtual switch controller. So we will use the virtual switch controller. Um, so this one, if you run it with show, uh, it shows all the configuration of the current uh, OVS, which currently we don't have much configuration. We just say it just gives the, the OVS version. Now, to create an OVS uh, virtual switch one, a new switch, uh, we will say add new bridge. And we just give it a name, so virtual switch one. So OVS virtual switch controller, add a bridge, create a bridge for me called virtual switch one. Now, if I do again the virtual switch controller show, now I'm getting this uh, configuration that, hey, there is a virtual switch one and virtual switch one has a port called virtual switch one and that port is called internal. So for each of these virtual bridges or virtual switches, there is one internal, internal port also being created. So that's like a 
the port which is connected to the uh, to, I think to the kernel probably for the whole virtual bridge or virtual switch now our next action is to assign these two interfaces to our virtual switch one uh, now to add that we can use uh, by the way you can use just obvious uh, vsctl dash dash help so it gives us all the uh, commands which you can use so these are all the bridge commands so we used add bridge to create a new bridge or new virtual switch and now we will use the uh, add port so we'll use the add port on this specific uh, virtual switch and we will assign those two interfaces uh, what was the two interfaces IP link okay so we got virtual Ethernet 2 and virtual Ethernet 4 that we have to assign to our virtual switch 1 so we will call OVS uh, virtual switch CTL add ports on where on V switch 1 which port we are going to add we are going to add virtual Ethernet and also we want to add virtual Ethernet 4 so by doing this command nothing will happen on my existing connection so if I do IP link then nothing has changed here so still I have virtual Ethernet 2 and virtual Ethernet 4 they are both here but if we call the obvious uh, virtual switch controller show now we got more details so we got additional ports so port number virtual Ethernet 2 and port number virtual uh, Ethernet 4 so both of them are connected to our virtual switch one so this is you know very similar to our networking world where you do you know switch port access VLAN you know 200 and you know you create two or three of the switch ports you know assign it to one particular VLAN here also we can assign these ports you know we can we can assign this uh, virtual switches to a VLAN ID as well and we can cr connect this to a trunk interface as well but uh, simply we just created this virtual switch like a VLAN you know and assign these virtual interfaces here okay now let's try and see if we can uh, ping from switch uh, from VRF1 to VRF2 so if we, I will say IP networking namespace execute for me on VRF1 do me a ping to 10.10.10.2 which is not working right so we have connected the interfaces we have virtual switch everything is okay it should work right but it's not working now let's see why it's not working um, okay, let's do uh, an IF config here. Okay, so those two interfaces are not showing here right now, which is, and we do IP link. Okay, here we go. So our virtual Ethernet 2 is down, and virtual Ethernet 4 also is down. So we never route up these interfaces. So we have to bring up the virtual Ethernet 2 and virtual Ethernet 4, which are both inside the default VRF. So we just say ipconfig virtual Ethernet 2 up and ifconfig virtual Ethernet 4 up. Okay, now if I do ifconfig now we get virtual Ethernet 2 and 4 because now they are both up and running they don't have any IP address because they are just layer 2 interfaces right they are layer 2 interfaces which are connected to our virtual switch 1 right now let's try to do the same command we will tell IP networking namespace execute on VRF1 ping 10.0.0 10.10.10.2 which is working so we brought off our interfaces now the communication has happening so we got we got everything ready let's get back to our uh drawing here so we assigned the ethernet 2 and ethernet 4 v okay now we are planning for enabling the spanning tree also between uh switch 1 and switch 2 and we have to assign ips to switch virtual interface okay so we will be assigning let's do this for this one first uh we create a switch virtual interface on the ovs itself with 10.10.10.3 
Uh, so here we got a interface called virtual switch one. This is the bridge interface or the SVI interface or IP interface. You know, there we have lots of different acronyms or names for, for our virtual for, for our virtual interface names, right? You know, different different vendors they call it different things. Um, so let's do that. So we say I have config uh, so for virtual switch one, I want to assign 10.10.10.3 slash 24 up actually it's already up if i do ip config again now we got this ip address on this switch right now from here because we uh, we have this ip address on this switch on the switch interface i should be able to ping from here from the default vrf into this vrf and this vrf right because we have direct connectivity and this is the switch virtual interface right so if I ping 10.10.10.1, it is pinging. Yes, that's absolutely right. And if I do two, also that is also pinging. Absolutely right. So now let's go for uh, playing with spanning tree on the virtual switch here. Let's do our enabling check. If we have a spanning tree or we don't have a spanning tree, let's see what's going on there. Okay, now, so we call OVS virtual switch controller say so set bridge which bridge the the virtual switch one and stp spanning tree underscore enable equal to true okay now for checking that you can use obs uh, obs db client Sorry, OVS DB client, OVS database client, just dump it. Let me make, make this, maximize this. Uh, okay, so here it gives us some, some information uh, about, uh, about the switch. So one of the tables here, uh, open switch table, uh, so port table. So in the port table, uh, we got we got information about yeah the spanning tree of the ports. So these two ports, this is virtual Ethernet two, virtual Ethernet two is in forwarding state, and virtual Ethernet four also is in forwarding state now. So spanning tree has been enabled. So we could run this command actually before that. We can do we can disable it. So false. And we run the OVSDB again. So we don't have any more information about the spanning tree here. Uh, if I enable it again, and we do the dump. Oh, here we go. Now we got the ports are in the listening states, right? So they start listening, and then they go into the forwarding if they don't receive any BPDUs. They are still in listening. So if I do a ping now, 10.10.10.1, .10 .10 it's not working because the port is in listening. Spanning tree is not allowing any packets to be received by the port. Once the port is changed from listening to forwarding state, then it will start working. Here we go. So the port started working. If I do the client dump, now the port is forwarding and we have everything running, right? One more thing we can check is how we can find the MAC address table of this virtual switch, right? So this virtual switch which we got here, we should be able to find the MAC address of the VRF1 and the MAC address in the VRF2. I mean the virtual interface uh, in each, we should be able to find that. Uh, to do that, we will call OVS uh, application app control. So app control will help us to talk to the obvious daemons, uh, different daemons, and get some information. So if we call obvious app control with the parameters of FDB, forwarding database, slash show for, for vSwitch1. So here we go, we got two of them, 
right so this is the local this one is local means this should be our virtual switch switch virtual interface and this is the port one which i'm assuming is for the uh port one the, the one connected to the vrf one now if i ping again the two uh that's also working and now we got one more here because you know it has the age so once there is no packets going to being generated or going to this particular mac uh, it will get deleted from the mac address table so we got both the mac address we can verify that if we do if you say ip networking namespace inside execute for me in vrf let's say two I want to do if config. Uh, the MAC address ends with 8C98, which is matching here. So 8C98, 8C98, that's the same thing, right? So this was our demo about, uh, you know, OVS and the Net Linux networking namespaces or VRFs that, you know, you could see how easily we can create virtual switches within linux and even you know if you have uh time you can build these labs and you can connect also a physical interface also connected to your virtual switch a specific uh trunk interface one of the vlans of your of your uh you know trunk interface you can connect it to this particular uh virtual switch and you can provide you know, full connectivity to this uh virtual uh to this uh, vrfs or uh namespaces uh, inside your inside your host so this concept you can extend and apply into many 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 things so instead of these very basic vrfs which we created you can create you can have virtual machines of course so virtual machine or containers they can be assigned to a specific virtual interfaces and they can be connected to an ovs switch and you can do you know uh, connectivity between those virtual machine within the virtual machine within the host only or you can connect them to the outside world uh, so these hypervisors for example you know hypervisor they can uh, either they use proprietary kind of uh, this virtual switching part virtual switching stuff some of them they use OVS some of them they use just the Linux bridge and so in also you know what what we achieved today just now with ovs we could do the same also with the uh, linux bridge so if we could create a linux bridge and we could assign these two interfaces to a linux bridge and achieve exactly the same thing uh, so ovs and uh, linux bridge are similar there are some differentiators that you know i have explained in the course i think you already know that and but in general you know you can create virtual machines you can add virtual machines or containers or virtual firewall or virtual router all connected to you know these complex or very scalable uh obvious and you can you can create different different scenarios for for our or your requirements now one more thing i want to add here is that uh, if you remember we were using mininet which is a tool for you know testing and uh, testing the sdn controllers uh, so mininet also uses exactly the same concept it uses ovs and it uses uh, linux namespaces for creating those virtual hosts uh, but the way they use the namespaces is is a nameless uh, method for for creating the namespaces so here we created the namespace with a specific name like vrf1 or vrf2 but in mininet when they create the when the script actually creates those uh, namespaces for the host it uses nameless method so with a nameless uh, namespaces you will not be able to see them when the ipnet ns uh, list command has been executed so you will not be able to see those uh, namespaces so that's the you know a little bit different you know when uh, when mininet creates those uh, namespaces uh, this was all about the uh, the obvious and uh, namespaces i hope uh, it was useful and please if you have any question regarding the obvs uh, you can please write it in the forum or you can contact me directly thank you very much